very briefly um, about some, some of the new features of the UL editor, um, which is called Editor 3.0. Uh, once this is done, it'll be part of UL 3.0. Um, users, users' perspective of the URL system are through the editor and through the, uh, to a lesser extent, through the WordPress, the web, web browser uh, pages. Um, so we're acutely aware that even though there's a, not, you know, most of what goes on is yet behind the surface, we're acutely aware that a lot of the judgment of URL is based on how the editor works and how the editor is judged. Uh, it's almost a decade old, as it says. Um, and in that time, it basically uh, looks pretty much the same as it did 10 years ago. They've added a few coloured buttons and that sort of thing, but basically the layout and the functionality uh, of, the, of the editor hasn't changed that much. Um, the thing is, when it was first written, it was written as a prototype um, and it was control flow only. So decisions that were made for the first couple of versions that were perfectly reasonable in terms of a, of a prototype um, aren't so reasonable looking, looking back there and they sort of uh, inhibited inhibited the way in which the your editor uh, developed over the years. So originally it was control flow only and I think uh, in the one of the slides from uh, Arthur this morning you could see the jump in the, in the lines of code in the editor between when it was control flow and when it incorporated the data perspective. Quite a lot of extra work gone in. Uh, because of its prototypical base, uh, there were those extra perspectives were just grafted on. So resources, also another big perspective, timers, configuration, extended attributes, all the rest of it, were just grafted onto that prototypical base, which made it more and more com complex, harder and harder to update, harder and harder to add functionality to. Uh, and it remains bug buggy to this day, as we are all painfully aware. So this is how the editor currently looks in terms of code. The, the, the package structure, it's, all, it's a, a monolithic structure, so you've got packages to deal with uh, the in, in, interfacing with the engine, packages which deal with the user interface. Um, it actually reads in JGraph library, not as a library, but as source code, and compiles that in to the jar file. It also reads all of the other libraries it needs. It decomposes them into code and reads that in at compile time which is why you've got a, like a 16 or 17 megabyte jar file. Um, also the your classes are, comp are compiled into it as well. Um, and we've got the reduction rules and the analyzer are also part of that monolithic structure. So there's no real definition between uh, the core back end, the uh, way it stores data, the way it talks to the uh, engine and the resource server, and the way it presents that data on the, on, on the screen. So every time you make a change, it almost, almost invariably has a side effect, an, un an unintentional side effect. So the new architecture looks something like that. So we've separated out entirely all of the core functionality and, and uh, presented it through an, an API. So all of the uh, resourcing perspective, control flow, data perspective, um, connections to the engine and the resource servers, um, saving of files, opening of files, is all done through that uh, core library jar file now. A very, a very concise standard API uh, plugs into the user in interface. So two things we wanted to do is separate that core from the user interface to allow other user interfaces to be plugged into the core and through that API be able to construct your own specification. Um, and secondly, we, we, we wanted to improve the UI that currently exists to make it easier to use. You can also see that we've separated out the, the analyzer as a separate library. The libraries are outside of the of the YUL editor jar file now. And, um, Two additions. One uh, is the ability to uh, add plugins to the user interface, which through a very simple uh, data in interface, you're able to add menu items to the, to the editor uh, of 
have any description that gives full functional or sorry full access to the functionality of the editor itself. And the other thing is a repository which allows us to save various parts of specification, which I'll go into in the next slide. Yeah, so basically any number of UIs are supported, whether they be graphical based, text based, uh, web based, whatever. All plugins that actually, that no longer does anyone have to be concerned with how to build a specification. Uh, the core jar file allows you to handle multiple uh, specifications concurrently. And you basically get this, through, this object through the API, which speaks then to access to those objects, one for each of the uh, major perspectives. And so it's for each of those uh, methods to handle a, those, those particular perspectives. Um, the repository in the core jar file allows you to save uh, net decompositions. So in other words, descriptions of nets themselves. So you can uh, save a subprocess of one net and use it as a main net in another specification or vice versa. Um, you can save task decompositions. So you can use the same task in multiple specifications. Save data type definitions, either entire data type definition sets or subsets thereof, and simply add, add them into the uh, specification of the current set, sorry of the current specification, and ext extended attribute sets can be saved. So once they're set up once, then it's simply a matter of applying them to the respective tasks as, as needed. Okay, so that's how, the, that's how the editor currently looks. Now this is very much a, a pre-alpha version as it currently stands, and it's open to uh, change, so it may not look anything like this. Uh, but you can see that it's a bit of a slightly different interface, but the main difference you can see there is a properties window on the left hand side. And what that properties window does, it gives you instant access to all of the selected layers, the current selected layers. So at, at all times you'll see the specification properties there, uh, and the particular net that's chosen at the moment, you'll see their properties. If you select a task, you'll see all of the task properties there. On the next slide you can see it in a bit more detail. So these, these can be rolled up and expanded. Um, and any of, any of the properties for any of the levels can be uh, accessed through there. Um, for particular uh, values, for example, color, we'll open up a, di a dialog which will allow you to change colors and save them. Uh, you can find custom forms there. Uh, you, a drop down dialog will allow you to, sorry, drop down box will allow you to set the join type and the split type. Another drop down box will allow you to set the position. Um, and uh, data values are set. You can set them both at the net level, data variables there, and data variables there for decomposition of the task. Um, yeah. So that's, that's the, the properties window. Now, arguably the most difficult part of the editor, as we all should be aware, is the uh, data perspective, because it makes people learn X queries in XPath, even to very trivial uh, specifications. So, and, it, and it's what turns people off, basically. Unless they want to learn some X query in XPath, they'll stop using your and start looking for other things that are easier. So one of the major things we're trying to do is make it easy, make it data perspective easier for the novice user while not taking anything away from uh, the more professional user. So, uh, yeah, so all of these things have to be, uh, you know, you have to be across all these things in the current editor, particularly multiple instance tasks where you've got to define accessor splitters, instance queries, and so on, are uh, very, very difficult for most people, even, even you know, when I was writing the manual took me quite a while to, to work out how to actually describe it. Very, very difficult to lay out. Which, which, because of that, most people will never use the multiple instance task, and so they lose access to that functionality that would otherwise be available to them. So in the new editor, there's a single dialogue um, which you can get access to the task and the net, net variables at the same time. Taken out the input output, in, sorry, the input and output concept 
uh, from an Indian perspective, there's no such thing as input and output variables. There are, in, there are inputs and there are outputs. And if a variable has got the same name and data type, uh, then that's what's defined in the editor as an input and output variable. But the concept or the metaphor of input and output is only in the editor. It's only a concept that was created for the editor itself. The dialog supports drag and drop. So you can drag a net variable to the task variable and it will automatically add the task variable, automatically create all the necessary mapping in, in one hit, even to multiple instance tasks. So you mark one variable as a multiple instance task, vari task, vari task variable and it will create all the splitter and accessor uh, queries automatically. So no one would the users have to care about uh, X query at all. Just because you're adding from here down to there, it creates, creates the variable and the mapping. So you've got inputs into the um, task and outputs from the task. If you want to add another net variable, you can do it in the same dialogue. So no longer do you have to go to uh, the top level menu to add a net level variable, then right click on the task to add a task level vari variable, then right click on the task again to perform the mapping between them. And then open up dialogues to inspect things and so it's all done in one hit. There's buttons here which allow you to open up uh, a sub dialogue which will show you the mapping and you can then change that to whatever you wish if you feel comfortable in doing so. But as far as a novice user is concerned, they need never, never even think about that, that X query or XML level. Um, also, there's a simplified data definition language, again, for novices, um, where um, a Pascal-like uh, language can be used to define data types. So, for example, that construct in the XML schema becomes that construct in the, in the uh, other type of data definition. And that'll be switchable. So if you want to switch to the XML schema definition, ZSV, and go right ahead, if you want to write it in, in a simple format, you can switch that and use that format. Now we're not going to try and uh, cover everything that you can do in XSV, but as a novice user, most of the things they need to do will be able to be simply described uh, in, a, in a window. And it's the same for that. So all, all of that construct needs to be replaced by one of them. And again, they're use, reusable between specifications and across specifications. Uh, the resource perspective. The wizard metaphor is old. Um, it's got other problems. For example, if you wanted to change anything, you had to go start from page one each time and then flick through to the thing you wanted to change, even if it was on the last page. So as soon as you make a change, any series of, di of dialogues, it's saved. So there's no option to... Uh, cancel out or roll back any changes that you've made before you finish. Uh, it's uh, too verbose, so every time you open it, it gives you a full help type text. So in this example, this screen, for example, for one drop down box, you've got this huge screen area taken up. And also it's always on top, I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, but if you have it open and then you switch to something else, it always remains on top, even if you go to a Word document or or whatever, which is very annoying. Um, so all of the all of the information that's captured in all of those screens is more easily captured in a single screen like that. So rather than list all of your participants, all of your roles, etc., by clicking on the plus button at the bottom of participants, for example, it'll open up a list. And you can choose the ones you want, and it will only show the ones that you're interested in for this task. You can add filters there. Um, you can add any number of filters, any number of, uh, I think you can only add one of each particular kind in the current editor. But you can add any number of filters across your di distribution set. Add constraints there. You can choose by ticking the box, whether it's a system offer or a user offer, and, and um, application and start as well. Uh, you can always cancel out of any changes you make. So nothing saved until you press the OK button. 
Uh, we do plan to add swim lanes at a later date, although I'm not quite sure how that will work, um, to just to allow to be able to be allowed to um, add all this type of information, which is quite difficult to display that. But anyway, that's one option for later. And also, we mentioned before uh, earlier today about uh, having overlays. Uh, so you can overlay the data perspective or overlay the resource perspective and have some sort of idea of how data or resources interact with the uh, control plane. So hopefully, having run out of time yet, um, so that was, as I said, a very brief overview of the major features, uh, but almost everything's changed under the hood. Uh, the current edit has about 600 classes in it. Two, 200 of them have been gone, uh, been removed completely. So a lot of complexity has gone from under the surface as well. But the, but the overall aim is to, uh, as well as being able to separate the back end out so any number of UIs can be uh, written, uh, also trying to make it easier for users. So the user can use, get a more positive user experience, and they're more likely to go, uh, go more deeply into uh, the capabilities of your should be easier to teach because they don't have to, they don't want, you know, you're not going to have to spend three uh, classes teaching XML necessarily. Maybe just a brief overview would be enough. Maybe you don't even have to show that level of detail these days. Um, other possible additions, maybe a direct uh, service task decomposition. In other words, you just choose the, serv the service you want that task to interact with and it will automatically create the net level boot, net level and task level variables and create the mappings between them without having to do anything else except to select the uh, service you want. Effective overlays, of course, without simulation is one thing that might may be useful, but I don't, I'm not sure uh, how deeply we want to go into that. And of course, as I said, because it's pre-alpha, um, any ideas will be appreciated. So now's, now's the time to get your wish list in as far as the editor is concerned. And um, hopefully, in August, we'll have something uh, for people to play with. Maybe September. <laughs> <laughs>